All right, hello everybody and welcome back to the Oriversary. We still have many hours of amazing Ori content coming at you that is put on by the speedrun communities, both of Will the Wisps as well as Blind Forest. And here specifically, we are going to be showcasing off a randomizer relay race featuring four really, really skilled and talented runners. We're going to be going head to head. In the top left, we're going to be starting off featuring Cleanfell, who is the most recent actual randomizer tournament champion in singles. And then in the top right, we are also going to have featured Sirius. And that being said, my screen name is Covert Muffin and joined on comms for both of these runs is going to be Zemsis. Zem, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, I got pizza during that break and during that amazing MQO race. So I'm doing good. And, <laughs> you know, I, I, I love the fact that we had to nerf Sirius and pull him out of Will of the Wrist. He's running Blind Forest now <laughs> yeah. in that relay. <laughs> yeah, so we also did a Will of the Wisp randomizer tournament recently, and Sirius just absolutely cleaned house. It was a really epic performance on, on their front, but we literally had to take him out of the Will of the Wisps because there's too much of a deficit. <laughs> and we, we definitely would like to, to see a good close one. Uh, but that being said, are you good to go, Zem? Uh, sure, let's count down the runners. All right, we will be starting in three, two, one. All right, time for this completely uh, unspoiled spawn. Our runners do not know that they are going to spawn in, is that Grotto with Glide? I think it's Grotto with Glide. I, I actually I, I do not know my teleporter. Is the swarm? Is that Grotto? It is Grotto. Okay, cool, cool. So this is the right side of the map in sort of like an early game area. So Uh, yeah, this is right side, as Muffin mentioned, early game area. Uh, people have been complaining about getting grotto spawns all the time before this <laughs> this specific race. So uh, glad we're getting a grotto spawn here too. Uh, you can see a clean on the left doing uh, the XP manipulation that you can do on a grotto spawn to immediately get a level up here for that bridge cutscene skip. On the other side, uh, Sirius has been doing the fast fall downwards, which will get the one map stone. The the one kind of annoying thing about this grotto spawn is uh, it, this is a lot of teleports and dropping back down over and over again to check like one-offs everywhere and, until you get your second skill. And looks like so far it's a map stone map stone there is a map pedestal here so we can turn that in definitely maybe get something three energy might lead into a four energy into glades uh, kind of progression depending on what else we are finding here now clean on the left gonna do a bit of a gliding yeah that's four energy so all we need is actual progression uh like an, a skill that gets us into grotto vault or into glades or anything uh just glide sadly isn't quite enough to do a lot of stuff here so we're gonna need to see if we can find anything else 12 xp on the water all right yeah, it seems like it's probably going to be this this one pickup that we see Sirius in, in the right side of your screen going for, where this is actually like a pretty common thing that people forget is in Logic. And it is indeed, it's going to be Grenade Blue Breakage. So once again, <laughs> we're going to be teleporting back to the Grotto Teleporter and then fall back down to break some plants. All right, so we already know we have four energy. Um, that... We got grenade, that's not quite the like wall interaction I was expecting for a nice grotto vault start or something like that. Instead, uh, it is a mandatory multiple drop. I don't actually know if glide is enough to get the plant under the teleporter, but the logic math knows, uh, so our runners can do. And there's wall interaction, okay. And a growth TP, so uh, not that much of a closed in start anymore. We actually have options now yeah pretty nice too i know we've talked about this extensively zem but uh growth tp is really interesting because it makes it 
easy to get access to a bunch of key doors like very early in logic so now because of this the game is just going to print out like a bunch of keystones on the map so uh one area in particular spirit caverns as well as double jump tree now probably have like the highest probability of having their next bit of skill progression so we'll see how our runners end up working through uh these portions of the seed but also with climb right that that brings black root burrows into into the picture oh, very nice on the right yeah serious getting a first try hop slide wow. very very nice uh, even if we have four energy we don't care <laughs> we just do the <laughs> normal skips anyway i love that uh, also getting the glide uh the climb glide ramp there which allows us to now actually check grotto walls and this is one of those um I want to say it's like one of those stylized plays like it, it takes a while to check this but also uh, we've seen so much stuff in this world uh, sadly it doesn't quite pay off for series here it just gets a single keystone but hey uh, I guess this early in the in the siege we, we are happy about every keystone we can get yeah, so Clean on the left is actually going to be the first one to make sort of progress in the constraint, which we are running uh, all skill locations, also known as forced trees within the community. And so uh, in order to be able to start and finish the final escape, we need to activate every single skill location on the map. And so here on the left, Clean Fell is going to be the first to make it to double jump tree, finds an ability self for their troubles, and they're actually going to be doing a glitch known as a save anywhere. We'll explain that a little bit later on. But basically, he saved the game after starting the cutscene of the tree, and that allowed him to be able to uh, move around during said cutscene. But on the right, Sirius making the play to do the reverse death gauntlet in order to get to the very start area in a normal playthrough of the game right here in Glance. Okay, we also see some interesting stuff from Clean using that Grove teleporter to be able to uh, come over into the valley entrance itself. And that's going to allow them to, to get some checks, but they are going to be very quickly moving on and doing another save anywhere. See that ability menu up in the foreground. This is just all to save the game after crossing that cutscene trigger. And this is going to allow Clean to make their way over to that charge flame tree where normally you get charge flame in in the run but uh because we're playing on a randomizer we may find something different and serious on the right for their troubles they are in glade so they are going to be able to get access to the sign pickup we did start the run with sign it was just sort of given to us at the start because in random spawn it can be quite a ways before you actually end up collecting sign normally in the run but uh here this is also actually going to give serious Glade's teleporter, and so that they can quickly backtrack to the teleporter and head on into Black Root Burrows, which is going to have two skill locations. But ooh, on the left, Cleanfelt breaks a plant by Charge Flame Tree and finds the Glade's teleporter as well. But more importantly, they found the Valley teleporter, which is going to give him easier access to the left side of the map. And that's like one of the bigger time saves overall in Rando, is just getting a left side teleporter. I would be very surprised if Sirius did not also find that. Yeah, Sea Flame area is uh, one of those areas you kind of don't get to skip in an all trees race, uh, seeing how the Charge Flame tree is right there. Also, I don't know if you mentioned it, but sign for the constraints of all trees is counted as a tree. However, since it's not actually counted by the randomizer as a tree, it does not progress your hint, so you do not get uh, any faster of a water wing clue or anything like that from uh, collecting sign early like Sirius did. But uh, yeah, now with the new ad R, it is faster to just add R out of the first half of Black Root. No, basically no matter your skills that maybe charge jump can do it faster without ad R, but that's basically it. And um, Sirius really working hard on that the slow Black Root tree in the, in the early game that we've talked about quite extensively earlier in the seeds. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's very funny. So because Sirius has glide, this was a little bit faster to, to alt R. But if he didn't have glide, if all he had was say like wall interaction, it's it's the same exact amount of time to like take the the like the the lanterns and like the platforms and stuff normally uh, as it is to do like an alt R. But uh, it's just so much easier to just do that instead of like going through instant death lasers. But on the left. Leanfell finds a really powerful skill, which is going to be double jump. 
Yeah, both double jump and an important hit in Sunstone in Glades. That is not very scary if you already have grenades. So uh, we can be pretty confident about getting our Sunstone without too many problems here. He now gonna catch up also on that tree progress by walking over and uh, grabbing sign that series already earlier. Um, on the right we are starting our nice cup scene stack here that we've seen a few times. First some little crusher dance to do the dash lock check. It's 34 experience. That's not too high, not much information to be gained yet from that. Uh, it might look a bit different if we see more pickups in the boulder area, but it might also, Sirius might also just uh, go for more trees like Sea Flame and Wall Jump. We'll see. Yeah, it'll be interesting because like Sirius knows Clean. Clean is like an incredibly competent and very, very skilled rando uh, speedrunner. And so they may just kind of opt to skip Boulder Escape. No, they are going to go down for that. I honestly prefer going for Boulder Escape. Uh, it does take about a minute overall to be able to get down there and get the information from those pickups, but it could tell us something very, very important because after Boulder Escape, the two pickups there are gated. They require something known as a power skill, at least one, to be able to get through and get those checks and logic. So this could be some really useful information with where they may track down Bash or Dash or even Charge Jump, which would probably be uh, the best thing that they could honestly find. Yeah, uh, so let's see if we're actually gonna get any information or if it's just going to be three mad stones. Um, <laughs> which would kind of be information, but mostly that the seat is going to be a problem. <laughs> uh, for now, well, it's one. Uh, <laughs> I'm all up for two more. <laughs> Oh no. Okay, let's see if the, the one below is also going to be a map stone. But yeah, I like this from Sirius. They're just going to turn in that map stone first. And uh, map stones, where you, which pedestal you turn them into, doesn't matter for the sake of the pickup. It's just the number of total map stones oh. you've turned it. Oh, oh. Oh, what? The, the Bronchi didn't die. Interesting. Yes, uh, 4.0 recent edition. If you alt R during that, it, it, in that specific fog, that, that Frankie will not die to the explosion anymore. Wow, <laughs> okay. Up. That's really nice. I did not know that. Oh, oh on the right, uh, just look at Sirius. Sirius is doing a trick where they pause the game after the grenade made contact with the, the, the swinging platform. And there and it is! The sandstone. sandstone, okay. Yeah, that's in a really convenient spot, honestly. Clean might not get that that soon. Uh, won't have too much of a trouble once he actually digs for it, but he has no reason to really be in that area right now with how much of the map is open and seeing how he already got his trees. Speaking of which, uh, it is now kinda on Sirius actually opening the first Glades door here and has a bunch of health, so he can check long flippers and this is one of those plays I always like to get no, 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 Yeah, oh my god! Uh, wow. That is a huge advantage for Sirius. Yeah, I was going to say I liked Clean's routing overall a little bit better over their opponent Sirius uh, in the early game. But man, that bash find, that is just so massive. I Actually, from the most recent randomizer tournament, there was like a race by Trojan Dude where he just did, he found a mega health and then just went into the poison water immediately. And he got bashed and ended up winning that race. But like, it cannot be understated just how important that bash find was. Bash, absolutely the most powerful skill in the entire randomizer, especially. Yeah, we've... Uh... I love talking about it every single time. Get bash, get maybe like a teleporter and uh, don't be too strict on your definition of out of bounds and you're gonna hit every single pickup <laughs> in the game with just that. Um, might need to yeet some projectiles through the void, but honestly, uh, who doesn't like to do that? <laughs> but yeah, um, we now have the Valley TP that we mentioned earlier. Sirius uh, got that, seeing how it's right next to Sea Flame Tree. And also, there's really just one, one uh, direction Sirius can reasonably go right now, which is to Wall Jump Tree. And then we're gonna have a Bash Grenade Double Jump Glide movement. And that is a very oh. powerful traversal tool. Yeah, it is so nice to see. And I. Uh... Honestly, Sirius is in like skill go mode at, at, at this point, or no, actually not quite yet because he can't do the final escape yet, so. <laughs> yeah, just that one more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> problem. Yeah, it's so funny. 
Uh, but some really nice bash grenade movement here. It is a little bit quicker to just move around, but constantly with bash grenade, if you, if you have to go through some distances. Finds wall jump. Wall jump is actually, honestly, a very nice skill to have, especially when double jump comes in. But like climb in all honesty is like the superior wall interaction. And I'm not just saying this because I love grenade jumps. It like, it truly does uh, synergize incredibly well with this skill set in particular. Just bash grenade and climb is just so versatile with like checking some really inconvenient pickups otherwise. Um, but yeah, uh, interesting yeah. note here. Clean is actually specking a bit into the purple tree. So we're going to see if they decide to go up to spirit light efficiency or if they are going to uh, opt to take it like potentially all the way to sense. Yeah, I, I honestly, okay, a lot of things happening. First of all, yeah. Sirius didn't keep wall jump, so uh, that's kind of um, interesting. Uh, agrees with you there on Clyde being superior. Also, Clean is oh. here with all this health, and he yes! is going for a second long flip as attempt, and he should be oh, able good. to make it. And thank God we're not going to yeah. have Sirius just completely run away with the race. No, uh, both of our runners now have Bash Nate and... <laughs> yeah, bash nade especially, but also double jump and glide. And honestly, uh, seeing where clean is, where, where Sirius is, there's like a tree animation separating our two runners right now. Yeah, so once clean gets sunstone here, they're like, that's pretty much it. They are top. So like this race is so incredibly close. Like I cannot express that enough, how amazing. And just like, just a true showcase of like, the, the caliber of, of these two runners in particular. So we're, we're going to see how the race pans out. Sirius is returning uh, on the right, back to the right side of the map, probably going to be making that play for Stomp Tree potentially. And uh, we mentioned that Sirius ended up not keeping wall jump. And so the reason why Sirius did this is it saves a little bit of time backtracking, but almost more importantly is it got him the two keystones back. And in like in these force trees races, no, hold the phone. Sorry, we'll get back to that. But Sirius on the left tracking down. I mean, on the right tracking down Dash. That is such a huge skill to find. And so, I mean, like we got skill parity once Clean ended up uh, finding that Bash as well using the Mega Health. But with with Dash, this is just absolutely going to speed up the the later portions of the run in particular. So big not only that. Dash is actually enough to go into go mode because charge dash will grant us that wall breakage that we were missing. And uh, there was also some interesting information. Clean got a clean water in an in logic place there very oh. early, which means the bash was in logic, which means uh, th those high EXP we saw under the boulder, those are more of a hint for charge jump and stomp than anything else and we're probably not seeing those uh, too soon is what i would assume here so yeah now we have uh we we got a go mode skill set on the right we got a comfy clean water on the left series is also gonna pick that up now there's like zero problems and unless water rain is stomp locked in horror that's uh, that's a go mode <laughs> Here on the right is going to be sequence breaking towards that stomp tree itself. So they are going to break this water. And uh, I think he wanted to take the frog over to, to break the ceiling. But with clean water, it doesn't matter. He can just like swim his way back up. So kind of doing this in like the backwards of what you would see in like a, like a normal playthrough of the game. Uh, and is going to be the first one to be able to make it over to stomp tree as clean on the left is actually going to be taking the upper route. Uh, which has some more pickup density, and this is like a completely reasonable play from Clean, even though we know it's like a bit away from Dash, uh, because Clean currently is not in skill go mode because they don't have uh, like a way to break certain uh, walls uh, in in the yeah in the final escape. Uh, we need wall breakage. That's C flame, C dash, stomp if you're a bit cursed, or a charge jump. And we know where one of them is, it's in Glide Vault. Not quite Glide in Glide Vault, but still a very good skill in Glide Vault. And uh, we have no clue about the other three, except that two of them are probably a bit later into Logic because of the high EXP under the boulder. So uh, at this point, um, I don't see too much of a reason for Clean to go into Glide Vault, if I'm completely honest. 
mostly because most of the density is already consumed. And uh, oh my god, serious, you're doing high hops under the crashers? That's uh, <laughs> that's a confident move to say that. <laughs> I mean, this is like totally the type of runners Sirius is as well. They just like bust out all of these. Oh, oh, doesn't even do the extra safety hop. Oh my goodness, that was so scary. So the Franky can actually die if it hits the, that small patch of spikes. But yeah, like th this is just like totally serious. Just go going for two less hops on the Franky quintessentially. Yeah, that's uh, that's. Truly, sometimes you just see those optimized setups that uh, no one really does, and then uh, you're feeling pretty great about it. Also, uh, that reverse Frankie Walk, um, I, I assume at this point, Sirius both wants another hint because this is three sickness and yeah, watering growth. That is pretty good for us. We can get every single pickup in growth. We do need some uh, first Fronky lure to do two of them or a nice double bash chain on the spider, but otherwise it's really not that bad at all. So we know we can get the water vein. We have our 6-3 and uh, yeah, with this series is looking towards valley entry, maybe uh... oh no, Sirius is actually going for the water vein right now, I think. Yeah, it seems like it. So we'll see how that search ends up panning out. On the left, Cleanfell is actually going to be using this one frog that spawned uh, called the Wilhelm frog, because it does the Wilhelm scree if you actually end up popping it off. But getting uh, Sunstone ends up is an alternative way to be able to break uh, those rocks. Despawning the kill Kuro kill plane, as well as getting access to the skill location, which normally gives you glide in a normal playthrough of the game. So Clean just making quick access to the left side of the map and just really pushing for that tree progression while Sirius is doing some digging in uh, Hollow Grove in order to track down Waterbane. Yeah, and honestly, I uh, like this as a watcher a lot because uh, A, we haven't seen those left side areas yet, but also B, uh, we know all of this is in logic with the uh, with, with Bash and so on. So hey, maybe we'll find uh, some nice skills over here to the left. Uh, Sirius is still really digging for Water Vein, and if Water Vein is near Horu, uh, with how I generally have seen Dean route, uh, Dean might get that a lot earlier if if he's doing like a Horu Fields first clear kind of deal in growth that uh, we've seen a lot of people do. Yeah, and wow, just beautiful movement from Clean. I just cannot say this enough of like how, the caliber of speedrunner that he is, especially in the randomizer, right? He won, he clearly won the previous tournament. That's like no small feat. And just getting through this area with what grenade bash and like double jump with glide, this is not easy to do. And Clean is just absolutely putting on quite the show with this. When Sirius goes through, this is actually going to show case off why having dash is going to be a massive advantage because. A lot of the incredibly difficult like tricks and sequence breaks that Clean is doing, Sirius isn't going to have to really worry about those, and or he's just going to be able to do ones that are going to be a lot faster. So dash really is just one of those skills that if you find it in a like a randomizer, especially in a race setting, it saves minutes. Like over just not having uh, track down dash at all. As Clean on the left is doing a really tight manip. Yeah, he got it. He got it. So. Taking this frog, this was a, a routing strat that I actually discovered. Uh, so without ch charge jump, you have to usually go up and around, but just baiting a frog shot there uh, allows him to break that ceiling from that side. And it, it just saves like a number of seconds. It's not too much. Yeah, but uh, definitely looks cool. And uh, we found and, like yeah. 20 different ways of doing that by now. Uh, so whenever you want to do a double grenade redirect, uh, just ask. Uh, for now though, <laughs> Um, there is still it's, uh, a disturbing lack of water rain as Sirius is full clearing the entirety of growth and Clean is opting to not go dun uh, dungeon key hunting yet, instead he is pushing trees and uh, it's looking pretty good honestly, can now head into sorrow, has bash, so we have the option of for example doing uh, that double bash chain utilizing the mortar worm that spawns in lower um, in lower sorrow and to then get to the tree keystones are also looking very very good so uh, depending on where that water vein where is that water vein are we gonna get total fields water vein or 
I no, I want the Dimpichi roof. I really hope, yeah, that either either the the Death Gauntlet roof, or I hope it's Butter Cell, which is also stomp locked. So we'll have to see. But Butter Cell isn't too much of a problem because they can take the Franky very easily. But uh, yeah, Death Gauntlet roof would be really terrible for our runners. They're really hoping it's not going to be there because uh, you either need to track down Charge Jump or Stomp to be able to get access to that. Oh, you can do cursed things with bash. On the left no. side, speaking of cursed Maybe. things with bash, very nicely done on the mortar double bash. Uh, gets that first try around all the nooks and crannies. Gets C-dash efficiency. <laughs> God, I bet Sirius would love to have that. Uh, maybe they trade, who knows? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for sure. The good news is that Sirius has just like a metric bunch ton of energy, like both runners do. Uh, so like charge dash efficiency isn't that bad. Like, oh no, it's not in Horu Fields, Zem. Oh, this is so bad for our runners. Oh, that's so. But great for us casters, right? I love to see stuff like this. Just I wanted the EG roof so bad, but uh, <laughs> I think the first thing we're gonna see now is. Butter cell, or we see uh, the energy board under water. Of course, uh, Sirius is first gonna actually activate Horu TP since we do not wanna waste any time uh, that we've spent. And since we're already here, can save on some backtracking later. Now, on the left side, you see a different version of reverse Fronky Walk, uh, utilizing Bash to get Fronky on top here. Uh, having a bit of trouble getting the Fronky up top, but now we're there, and that means. Uh, clean two is gonna head over to grenade tree. Probably uh, that's yeah. It's it's gonna be a nine trees into water rain search while Sirius is deep into his water rain search, but not as far on the trees. And it is in one Ooh. of two bad locations. We've checked everything else. Uh, man, that butter clip is looking juicy, but not allowed in here. <laughs> so uh, time to backtrack. Uh, yeah. So what Zem is explaining is uh, there's like a water puzzle section in like pro proper where you have to stomp a kite to get access to it. However, uh, there's like a spore on the the like the floor at the very bottom of the water swim section itself right next to the pickup. And what you can do is from underneath you can Oh no, serious uh oh that's too bad. Uh, so what you can actually do is just clip through the floor, but that's bypassing a physical barrier and because this is a no out of bounds uh, rule set in, in particular, we're not allowed to do that uh, bash clip. But it's like one of the few things where just having bash allows you to clip out of bounds. Yeah, and speaking of just having bash and cursed things to do, Sirius is actually going for the double bash chain that allows us to enter Death Gauntlet roof. And yeah, does not like that shot position at all. This is actually, if you go up our road, this is uh, the most precise spot because you want to catch the projectile between the semi-solid and the crusher. Um, of course, you have an alternative of going lower route where you have to get a projectile through falling crushers. And looks like Sirius is saying, you know what would be a better use of my time in this very moment? Uh, getting my 9 threes. So that's where he's going now. Yeah, I think this is absolutely the smartest play, right? We see Clean with like a really clear tree vantage, uh, which basically means that Clean has done more of the objective overall. So that if Clean finds that like one or two things he needs, then uh, the amount of time it'll take him uh, to be able to go and close out his objectives is a lot less time versus his opponent. And so that decides races. Like, it, it has, like, for sure, in a randomizer tournament uh, in a lot of cases. Uh, so clean, just making a very smart play. And I, I love this, too. Like, I wonder... No, he's just going to backtrack. Okay, that's cool, cool. Um, but yeah, Sirius on the right just, like... Uh, it's gonna come over and break these rocks. Oh, oh no! That's a bash back on Willem's shot. That's so rude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there, Sirius was the exact furthest distance away from a bashful object, uh, which causes Ori to move when when you cast the bash, but causes the object or projectile in, in question to not be affected by bash. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just the thing that happens. And uh, one thing to remember, by the way, if Clean now starts doing some curse stuff and actually finds the water vein, um, Clean still needs a skill. Like, uh, any skill, honestly. Okay, except for wall jump, but we already know where it is, so it doesn't count. Uh, but this skill set does not finish the final escape only because there is... Uh, 
there are too mandatory floors slash walls in the way and we cannot break them without doing uh, band tricks that no one would do in an RTA setting anyway. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And so here, I just really want to draw the eyes to this. On the right, we see Sirius now going through Missy, where we saw Queen just use Bash Grenade to get through. And you can just see how much faster it is by utilizing dash and charge dash and the glitches that we can do with charge dash in order to be able to, to zoom through really, really fast. And I mean, also just watching a runner of Sirius's caliber is just such a treat, like especially with all of that use of tech, like Sirius is clearly a very well-practiced and executed runner. And so we're going to see, but the other thing to mention about the say of the race sim that's actually really critical is after one of our runners dot duns, that, that's not it. The race isn't over. This is a relay race, which means Cleanfell and Sirius both have a teammate that after they finish their respective seed, the teammate is then going to have to do a Will of the Wisp randomizer seed. So it really like whoever finishes first is gonna have a, a an advantage like for the rest of this relay race, but it's not over yet. Anything can happen in randomizer. Yeah, and we can always just get uh, like eight shriek uh, feta meteor yeah. phases in a row, right? So, um, <laughs> uh, also speaking of the advantage dash gives with clearing uh, this, um, well, instead of doing a double bash chain, we can do the all skits method of just rocket jumping and that breaks the floor instantly. So, that's also pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. So we're going to see Sirius now. Come on over, grab his charge jump tree, which is going to uh, create skill tree parity between our runners as Cleanfell is doing his last bits of like check and like reasonable locations to track down uh, Water Vein. And so that's it. That's the question. Who finds Water Vein first and whether or not Clean is able to actually track down something that'll uh, allow him to be able to do and finish the final escape. Um, so here we go. We are going to see Sirius go back to Swamp Teleporters them. So maybe they are going to do the frog key uh, manipulation in order to stomp the peg to, to check by herself. Sirius is in skill go mode. It's Butter Cell and it's DG Roof, and he's able to do both of these tricks. Like, uh, Butter Cell is <laughs> by far the easier of the two, and he's oh, yeah. definitely able to do that, but also Sirius knows how to do double bash chains, and you could see him immediately think about actually doing it earlier, right? So uh, I, I don't see a world where Sirius is not just doing both of these things then. And uh, here's one kind of bad thing for Clean's potential to find something if he then chooses to do the same and gets Water Rain. So Water Rain is stone blocked, right? That's one of our wall breaks, and uh, we don't know where that is. So we kind of know that Ginsu can't have two of the four skills now that would help. Oh my god, Oh is... my god, he, yeah, I think okay. he's going for it. <laughs> uh, for one second, I thought he was actually going for the even worse lore oh, where yeah. you bring that to Spider Lake, but uh, let's do Butterfly first, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Bronkies can stomp a peg within a spider pillar area that gets you access uh, to the death gauntlet roof. But uh, we also need to break this floor, which requires stomp. And so, um, so let's see, is this water vein Zem? It, it is! is! Oh, okay, that's uh, good and bad at the same time because uh, yeah, Clean can do this trick too. Clean is very experienced with the Randall, so uh, he's gonna get his water vein, sure. But where's Charge Jump? <laughs> Where is, yeah. uh, where's Sea Flame? We ne he needs one of those two. And Sirius, on the other hand, is perfectly happy having uh, his uh, Charge Dash. If he really, really wanted to, he could get himself a Wall Jump for nicer walls, but he has Bash. He doesn't need that. So uh, that's that's what we what we call a go full go mode on the right side. All right. And so Sirius and his teammate are going to be taking a huge early lead here in the race for the relay but it's not over yet because we're going to have a runner on each team after this run a will the wisp randomize our seed but that is going to be super duper massive uh for sirius and his teammate themselves uh while they're coming in and clean fell for his trouble is actually honestly checking pretty early in logic pickups with just grenade and bash uh horu fields like opens up in logic very very early and then also uh knowing that clean water was early, which was the thing gating Bash and Logic. Uh, this, th that was honestly a pretty good play, is just checking those pickups in the main room of Mount Horu itself, but not finding anything, Zem. 
So the question that we all have now is how long, right? How long is it going to take Queen to be able to find that final skill that's going to allow him to do the final escape? Uh, but now it looks like Queen is also going to be attempting this sort of sequence break to be able to get access to Butter Cell, Butter Cell that we also ended up seeing Sirius do a little bit. Yes, this is this is the location of the save you place uh, when you want some extra attempts at this. And uh, looks like we did get the pack stomping done first try. A bit scary to be on 2 HP here because incidentally that's what the Fronky shot does. Uh, seems to not opt to go for Fronky lure here instead. Yeah, uh, this is a bit faster. I think Sirius did the Fronky because uh, when I saw his bashes correctly, he planned on then taking the Fronky to Spider Lake afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't want to despawn him. Uh, now, Clean has his water ring, can get his team 3. Uh, maybe Clean actually just goes up a bit further in Ginsa. You know, like uh, Banana Stand above the Bash tree is pretty dense, so maybe we can find something there. Or yeah. use this to get into inner swamp. But really, the question is, are we? We could go for sense at this point. Honestly, we're getting so many ability points, uh, and we need that one skill, and anything will finish. Speaking of finishing, uh, on the right side, Sirius in the final escape. Take it away. All right, here we go. So Sirius is going to be utilizing that charge dash to be able to break that floor. That is one of the sections that Cleanfell cannot quite get pass and there's another four followed by a wall all right good escape so far by Sirius not even taking a single damage so far just making this look incredibly easy so here we're gonna come in and do one more rocket jump here by taking this fish double bashing to be able to redirect the fish without moving Ori and then whoa one more bash okay there's Kuro and doesn't soft walk very close to actually a soft walk there if he had charged dash while touching that wall he would have had to quit the menu and be able to restart the final escape. But no, Sirius did not buckle under the pressure. And they are going to be taking the partial win so far, definitely taking the win in the blind force, but this is a relay race. So in just about 50 seconds, they are going to high five their teammate and send it over to them to be able to start their will to win. Yeah, indeed. Sirius just uh, in the whole right phase that we all love. So the moment he finishes the, uh, with Naru on the on the finish line, that is where we can start switching to Will of the Wisps on the right. But on the left, uh, so wow. much EXP, like 311 in Ginso. That's not what you want to see when you're looking for skills, honestly. Yeah. And uh, Kuro is swooping down in the moment. Clean is on his temp three. And do you know how close he is to actually getting sense? Uh, I, don't, I don't know myself, but we'll see if we can find out if we see that ability menu open. But also that being said, finding high experience mounts, I doubt Clean will continue. Oh, oh, they are very close. They're only about it looks like five four to five ability cells away from being yeah, that's able to a, get That's four ability cells and now SLE in a high uh, EXP area. Yeah, that works. On the right, you can see Zri has now taken over and... Uh, oh, okay. Now uh, I need to admit, I don't know this too well. Is this like how it's then left of the keystone door? That's an interesting spot. <laughs> Yeah, so there we go. We saw it. He's in like the bottom center of the map. Finds Reckless. So in... in Will the Wisp in particular, combat ends up being a lot more important. So here uh, we just have a flag that we spawn with sword itself and it adds like a lot of really good depth to like the movement potential. And so finding Reckless as well is gonna be really, really useful, especially if we see our runners having to fight uh, a lot of enemies or fight bosses even if, if that ends up coming up. So Reckless just giving us some extra damage, but also causing Ori to end up taking some damage. As on the left, uh, we see Cleanfell continuing on, finds an ability cell, uh, but yeah, not really finding much anything else, and they are going to leave Ginso. So something that I just want to bring up really quickly is that we saw like 300 plus experience counts in Ginso Tree. And so that's going to give Clean a really good indication that it's very unlikely that they will find a uh, charge jump or something else that they're going to need. Also, Stomp is guaranteed to not be capable of being played. Yeah, not being capable of being placed inside the Ginsu tree because Water Rain is uniquely locked by Storm, at least logically. This isn't expert logic where bashing the Fronky up is actually a thing. Nope. 
Uh, we, we needed that stomp for that, so now clean. I like the uh, way he went immediately for Vanny for the guaranteed XP on the plants uh, on top of the other <laughs> of, on top of the other pickups. So now he has sense and can do a lot of faster checking in uh, bigger areas, but still he needs to actually track down that skill and why he does so. On the right side, Zri can actually already start collecting trees in the other game. Yeah, and just like that, right, like Team Sirius slash Zri is going to be uh, taking an early lead, already getting that skill location done. So just like with the, the Blind Forest constraint, we are also running on the constraint with the Will of the Wisp speedrunners that they must activate all of the trees. And so uh, that is going to be fun that we have like both of those modes and they actually end up very uniquely causing both of these uh, speed games to be very interesting with that constraint in different ways. Uh, so we're going to need a number of like different things uh, in order to be able to get access to certain trees. And so there are ways to sequence break it, right? Like for example, the darkness and moldwood depths is a very, very cool constraint. So we'll see if we end up getting something like bow or grenade, which allows us to go through those areas without being required uh, to end up finding flash uh, to go through. Yeah, and uh, we, uh, jumping back to Blind Forest, um, Clean is gonna uh, find uh, a skill very soon. Sadly, we know it's wall jump, but... Uh, oh, actually! Wait, 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 wait. Uh, did I... Okay, no. I, I just didn't know his sense colors. For a second, I thought there was a second thing on Glazer, but uh, the, the sense colors go a bit more purple than I expected them to. So, nope, just a wall jump. And Grotto TP, Ooh. that's the correct place to be. <laughs> Yeah, so we know exactly where Dash is, and Dash is in Grotto. It's on the way down from the waypoint. Behind, Behind the, the two well. energy door. And uh, spoilers, uh, the tracker just showed up Dash, so I assume uh, we're gonna find it. I don't remember how far Siri, uh, Clean is up the tree, but seeing how he is teleporting to horror with dash immediately i would assume he has charged dash and can now finish uh, let's see uh, yeah okay yeah. that's a rocket jump he can finish okay meanwhile on the right we found double jump in a very fitting location um and yep. also a nice spear for uh, things like floor breaking we, we don't do spear combat right <laughs> <laughs> yeah indeed uh, Spear's also going to be nice because it's going to allow us to break certain floors and actually work uh, in Will's end if they have to go for the hearts. Actually, I don't think they have the hearts on. Uh, yeah, hearts are turned off, so we're going to have uh, a pretty fast end game there with no Willow hearts. Also, we should probably go over the, the other settings, right? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so um, I guess the, the most important thing is we, we already saw the fully random spawn, but uh, we have turned off trials, we have turned off Velo Hearts, and we've also turned off doing anything in dates. That spawn's done. Those are like the big things. And uh, then for the item pool, there is the full bonus package in here, including Velocity and all the other goods. So uh, a lot of variety to be found. Let's see how that goes. On the left, GG Clean, by the way. Clean Escape. Time to tag in about 50 seconds there too. All right, so yeah, it looks like we're going to see just about like a six minute differential between our two racing teams with the right hand side going to be deftly in the lead as they have been doing a great job clearing early game. And so, so a couple of differences between Will the Wisps and Blind Forest is that Will the Wisp as a randomizer is a much larger map. It is absolutely massive. Uh, in terms of the amount of distance that you have to travel in order to be able to go from one side to the other. The other thing about it is that there's a lot more pickups that are gated by hard locks, which basically means a hard locked pickup means that there is only one way to be able to go and check that pickup. Uh, so with that being said, uh, it, it absolutely is going to be really massive if we end up tracking down uh, one of those uh, important hard lock skills. Uh, but besides that, there's also like an additional 100 pickups in the randomizer itself. So a lot more variance with the seeds. Things are can be very spread out and it can go for longer periods of time where we don't. Yeah, if, we, if we're not gonna, uh, we, we can be doing a lot of clearing without finding anything. And uh, 
we do have zone hints and things like that that help us with tracking down specific, uh, well not specific, but rather the general density of areas and uh, where to get our skills. However, uh, we have seen last checks even on like, a, I, I've seen a seven skill march and the last six checks were skills, so... Uh, <laughs> Those hints are only helpful to an extent sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, awesome. And so we are well underway. So both of our runners are now going to be in Will of the Wisp. We see Ma on the left is going to be kicking off, doing the same sort of checks that we saw from Zri as they were going through. And so on the right, we saw Zri with the potential to be able to purchase a map. And they, I guess they ended up not doing that. So maps within the randomizer itself do a couple of really powerful things as three gets another damage buff with that ancestral light find buffing their damage by 25 percent damage i believe uh and so in in this area there are maps that you can purchase in every single biome and so uh with that if you end up purchasing a map it actually tells you a couple of things the first one is it tells you exactly how many skills if any are located in that area the second thing it does is it tells you thank you zuri is it tells you the <laughs> number of teleporters as we find zuri picking up qualix hollow teleporter a very very good teleporter to have because then it sequence breaks the requirements of finding bow to be able to get access to the right side of the map yeah and um as you mentioned right a lot of hard locks like a bow switch uh yeah that that can be opened by bow. It's in the name. Nothing else will open it. Uh, yeah. One could now think like a snowball can only be melted by grenade. Mm, maybe we'll talk a bit more about that uh, if it comes to that. <laughs> some of those things are actually locked very cleanly. And uh, we do want uh, to get our hard lock skills out of the way because go mode is so incredibly complicated in this game. It is. It truly, truly is. And so... Basically, the way, the way I like to explain uh, go mode in general is more often than not, the things that you'll need are this. Clean water and or water dash. Uh, most, most importantly, is going to be clean water. Then, uh, besides requiring clean water, they need burrow, right, to get to the very end game portion of the game itself. Then, besides burrow and clean water, our runners also need some form of verticality whether that's going to be finding launch by tracking down those fragments that are scattered around the map, or it could uh, be something like light grenade with double jump. Uh, it could be something like sentry and swords to be able to use those uh, for that sentry jump tap, right? And then the last thing that's required is some form of light source. It's not necessarily required, but it does really drastically speed up uh, mold wood depths in particular. Oh, yes. Bash. Yeah, we need Bash to be able to Yeah, bash. Uh, true. We we do need Bash because this tree right here is uh, serious. Uh, serious, yeah. Uh, serious, <laughs> uh, it might be a little to this runner, but not today. Uh, that tree that here is uh, uniquely locked behind, uh, behind Bash. You cannot open the puzzle without it. So that is kind of important too. And hey, uh, oh. thanks, Echo. Yeah, I think it's thanks, Echo here yeah, thanks, for Echo. the 1 XP. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. So there's a single one EXP pickup on the map, and uh, Zuri ended up just tracking it down, and Ma will also do so. Uh, so Zuri grabbing that teleporter, and I imagine they have they have enough spirit light. I imagine they'll spend the 50. Yeah, yeah, they're going up to the map immediately. Uh, it caught this map in part. Oh, whoop. Uh, yeah, this uh, oh, one skill in Burrows, that's like the thing you don't want to really see early game, I fear, because you don't want to clear the entirety of Burrows, but if you're early game, you might need it. Ooh. Never mind, it's right there, we get Grapple. Uh, I personally absolutely love Grapple, and also one thing we saw there, um, they are abusing multiplayer functionality to be able to uh, take deaths after pickups to keep them. So uh, it's not too bad. Oh, also, yeah, Bash now on the left side found two. That's great. Can also go into this area. Um, we do have trial hints active for like in combat trial hints. So just activating it at the start there will give us the information of what we get from completing it and turns out 150 spirit light is not really worth spending like six waves of combat on 
Yeah, I I love this play, honestly, from Zuri on the right, right? They using that Qualex Hollow uh, teleporter in order to be able to start making their way over as they actually do a possible. It's like one of those few pieces of tech that actually are in both speed runs, which are which is very, very cool. Uh, and this is going to allow them to do two things. The first is it's going to allow them to get access to Glades and Wellspring, which is going to be very useful. But then it also is going to get them another skill location, right? Ooh, regen. That is a really nice and comfy find from three on the right. Yeah, regenerate is a great thing. And uh, we also have dash. So um like having both of those, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so there's some nice speed tech where uh, if you dash into like a wall or something that can get in your way and then you turn around uh, with with that dash and, and activate regen, then you get some really nice zoomies. Um, but yeah, so far, both of our runners doing a good job of like cleaning up the map. Uh, so far, so good. Definitely still advantage on the right for the overall objective, which is going to be activating trees. Uh, but Ma's doing an excellent job as well on the left, just continuing to do checks that we, we already saw from Zri. So we won't get any new information for their troubles just yet. But Zri on the right, heading into Glades. Yep, uh, wall being torn down. However, there is no more dialogue. Kind of got removed. So no memes here. A quick shop check here. Um, of course, like black market keystones and the usual stuff is there, but also some normal stuff uh oh also i just saw the hint that there's five skills in marsh i might not have paid attention to that earlier so oh. now i know <laughs> yeah uh, but sorry go on um but speaking of shop shacks there's there's one other uh, shop in glades and that's kind of always one of my favorite checks because you just gain so many so much information so many checks at once and maybe uh it's it's uh three launch fragments in a shop yeah, indeed. And so on the right, we also see the Glades clean up. And <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So that's funny because the Glades, tele that is like the closest pickup to the Glades teleporter itself. So that is just absolutely beautiful to see that come up. But uh, also something else that's actually pretty nice for Zuri that they ended up finding. Ooh, that is really nice as well. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. Cause they found a badge called, or a shard, excuse me, called Vitality. And what Vitality does is it gives you plus one health. And then if you upgrade Vitality, it gives you even more health. And so that is one thing our runners have been starved on so far, are just like basic resources, like energy and health. And so uh, going into like the Shriek Escape, as we saw in like the MQO four-way race that we saw earlier today, uh, health, health is a big deal, right? So like if you take deaths during a certain phase in the boss fight, that can that can cost you over a minute. So just being able to increase that cap of max health is a very powerful thing to do, especially in Ori and the World of Wisps. Yeah, and we've seen Glades be completely stacked. We had some amazing shots in here, honestly. And also, um, I do want to see the deflector kill later. It uh, oh, looks damn. like the shop is mostly full of keystones, so we're going to buy those. Uh, don't, don't want expensive black markets but yeah holding on uh, there's clean water right here clean water and east luma tp i i hear in plates yeah that is really really nice uh once again clean water in will the wisps specifically is like one of one of the most powerful things to actually end up finding like we have clean water as a pickup to to like cause the water to no longer deal damage in blind force randomizer as well but just sort of the impact of how much of the map ends up getting opened up with just clean water is absolutely astounding. It really, really is very impactful. And so I, I would be very surprised if Mod during their glaze cleanup, they, they ended up missing that, but you never know. But here we got the hint. We see that there are two teleporters still in glades. So we'll, we'll see how much Zri keep, keeps digging in glades, but they may just take this straight over to the left towards Wellspring in order to uh, make progress to the grapple tree. Yeah, we do want, uh, we, after all, we do want our tree progression. And we do have uh, Bash and Grapple, both of the things we would normally use to actually go through the Wellspring. Well, one of them is in there and the other you kind of need to get there in the first place. So, uh, yeah, looks like looks like we're heading 
to the upper left part to the wellspring itself here for now and i think at this point like the single biggest skill we could find is grenade because it gives us both zoomies and uh shriek will survive for about 3.5 seconds if we find that yeah, indeed. Oh, fighting Magnet. Magnet is like just a very comfy pickup in general. Increases the pickup radius of Ori uh, with sort of like health, energy, as well as experience drops. And so that's nice. And oh no, uh, it's really just falling down a little bit, but they are starting in Wellspring. And something that I do actually want to note as import from a racing decision that I love to see, especially in top level randomizer runners in whatever game they're doing is, Sri so got the information, right? That there's only teleporters that they could end up potentially tracking down in glades. So, what did Zri do? They ended up just starting to skip all of the pickups that they were coming across, even ones that only cost like a few seconds to check because they know that they're either going to find resources or or nothing. And because they're early in logic, the spirit light values are just not going to be that that high at all. So uh, instead of doing that, ooh, that was a little spooky. Uh, instead of doing those additional checks, they are going to use their time effectively to now instead go immediately into Wellspring to, to make progress with finishing the objective in the seed itself. Yes, indeed. And uh, also getting some nice tech I haven't seen before there with the with the bash plus spear giant boost into the air. So I uh, always love seeing your tech. <laughs> okay, to be fair, in Will of the Risk, like every two skills will somehow eat you into one <laughs> direction or another. Yeah, but yeah. I haven't seen that particular combination with. <laughs> Yeah, that was very cool. I've never seen that either. Oh, uh, spear efficiency. That'll be nice if Zuri is comfortable with busting out that tech in multiple places then uh, to be able to extend that verticality a bit. And Blaze efficiency. Shout outs to Blaze. Most underrated skill within uh, the speed game itself. Most underrated warmth returned in the in the history of Ori randomizers. Uh, but looks like Ma is now also heading into the the big glades area. That means uh, all these things, all these nice things we found, Ma will also find. And that uh, will give us a bit more of parity. Actually, I can't, I don't quite have uh, like the time differential in my head, but I feel like um, it's, it hasn't been six minutes since uh, Zri has come here, so might be getting some catch up in the meantime. Yeah, indeed. Both players are playing incredibly well. Just such an impressive display. Like, I, I mean, this is just so cool to see. And like, one of the reasons that's been an absolute joy from speedrunning both of these randomizers is is that just like the the skill cap of the runners in these communities is just so incredibly high. And there's like so many nuances with, within the game that we we as casters, it's impossible for us to point out all of them, but there's just all these tiny little sort of jump segments uh, are incredibly difficult and incredibly tight. And so both of these runners are just making a lot of incredible platforming just look unrealistically easy, but, but it's not, it's not, it's just so impressive to me. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, I, I feel like you need to know a lot of weird interactions, especially in this second uh, second game of the series to really do fast randomizer. And we've seen both of them just pull all of them out whenever needed. Now Mo also doing the quick shop check doesn't actually like anything here, doesn't even want the keystones. So uh, that's some spirit light saved maybe for later. Also gets the clean water now. And uh, we've seen one, one skill, one one TP as our hidden for Wellspring, so honestly, wouldn't be surprised to just see a tree and dip here. Yeah, totally. I think that's a completely valid play, and so um, I am so happy to be honest that Ma ended up like tracking down that clean water because that could have been a huge race desire. So, you know, like complete parity there with the the like skills and stuff that our runners have like found so far. It just really is. Uh, Zuri has just done so many more checks in, in Wellspring uh, compared to their opponent. But we're going to see where Ma decides to go from here. They do also track down that East Luma teleporter. Very, very nice find for Ma. Um, but they are just going to, oh, instead go to the right. Yeah, checking these underwater pickups as well, just in case there's going to be something else to be found in Glades. Of course, we know that really it, it's just going to be those two additional teleporters that are somewhere. But uh, we'll, we'll see how long Ma decides to stay in Glades before they continue to progress on to their next tree to activate it and make 
uh, objective progress. I mean, uh, the very least would have been the hint, and that's exactly what Ma bought. Got the glades and now knows there are two more teleporters. And uh, now there's a bit of a decision to be made. You can't see him thinking for a moment there, but actually takes a different route. Goes into East Luma. We haven't seen this area today yet, and I'm very interested to see uh, how many things we're going to find in here. And God, do I wish we could just break that wall right now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, in all honesty, right, like, this is a, a great play from Ma. I like this a lot. Like, this is early in logic. Like, this is not a bizarre play or, like, a really risky play or something, even though, like, they don't have, like, water dash to be able to get through this water a lot faster. It's just a really, really awesome m maneuver, and we are going to get some new new checks. And there's a skill location here, right, Zem? So they are still objectively making objective progress. But, no, they're going to back off. That's good. It, it can be a bit long and daunting to be able to make it over to that skill location. So instead, Ma is just going to teleport out and then uh, just sort of decide where they want to go next. Yeah, there are a lot of locations we can get and uh, hitting that in logic filter and suddenly the map lights up like a Christmas tree with the with the pickups we already have. Um, there, there are a lot of decisions to be made. And however, we did see, like, on the right, especially with the hints already, that most of these zones just have a single skill. So where the actual progression remains and where, like, the big density progression... Oh, nice spear zoomy on the oh, left, no. too, by the way. Uh, is, to, is to be found in the end. That remains to be seen. Yeah, I, that's kind of like a scary thing, especially in Wellspring. Wellspring is like one of those areas that you never want to like full clear and do do all of, just simply because there's so many pickups. But then also, if you want to progress through the dungeon itself, it takes a long time to go through every single room painstakingly. And the, the like density, especially when you get into the second uh, area within the dungeon, it is incredibly slow. So really what you want is to be able to just go the tree and then get the heck out of Wellspring. Uh, and so Zree for his troubles ended up doing a lot of pickup checks and finding a lot of really good resources, but yeah, just not finding really anything quite yet, Sam. Yep. I mean, there, there was a third of a launch in there, but, uh, it's only a third and the only shot that matters is the third one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Truché. Right, having two stacks of rapid regen, so that's not gonna be any problem, like in combat regenerating also, not that these would need it, but... Oh, finds oh. water dash here, yeah, we're gonna keep that. Now, that is an absolutely huge find, and uh, I think that kinda also tells us where we're going to go next in the seed. Yeah, for sure, and so, uh, not quite using the, the East Luma teleporter, maybe just forgetting that they, ha they have it in general, but or maybe just honestly doing some additional checks, right? Uh, in order to just try and track uh, down something else. Uh, but yeah, using that water dash there is going to allow them to get through that water current. And then Zuri is going to opt, yeah, to just go through the front door. That's perfectly reasonable. There's actually a number of checks here that are going to be uh, very, very nice. And so taking death there, the crushers, no problem. Just plants them like literally right there. Uh, that is probably one of the biggest differences, especially between Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps, is that... Uh, there is a checkpoint system in Ori and the Will of the Wisps, whereas there are just very few of those like forcefully saved locations in, in Blind Forest. It's really mostly just going to be the trees themselves and the, the escape sequences. The, the ability to save is up to the player in Blind Forest, but in Will of the Wisps, it is, it is not. It is a forced checkpoint system. Yeah, and that uh, can both be incredibly annoying when it checkpoints you in like one energy and two health uh, or whatever the minimum respawn is, but it's also very, very useful whenever you take like a small death. It, it, it can only really be a small death because uh, the checkpoints are very generously placed. Also, um, just notably the, the multiplayer mode in Will of the Wisp sinks every single pickup and that means and uh, if they play with like multiplayer mode in a single race like this uh, that means they will keep any pickup uh, even through a death be it intentional or not so uh, there's a lot more safe scamming possible here but it's not really safe scamming if you keep it right <laughs> <laughs> yeah true uh so 
Very cool find uh, on the right. Zarya ended up tracking down Life Force, which is going to be probably one of my favorite shards. Basically, if you just have enough health, you'll actually end up uh, dealing additional damage. And this will help speed up that Shriek fight and make it honestly easier, right? Shriek is like one of the harder bosses in the run to do optimally fast. And so just having that extra bit of damage with Reckless, with Life Force, is going to allow them to have a much easier time. But now uh, we're going to see where Zuri goes. It looks like they're going to opt to grab the teleporter over here, which is a nice thing just in case they have to like backtrack here later on. Uh, but also in order to be able to get to the, the tree in this area, you have to do like a really, really uh, annoying sort of lure. But oh my goodness, Zem, do you see what I see on the right? This is just absolutely, absolutely hilarious play from Zuri. <laughs> Ah, that's uh, that's one way of getting up, I guess. But yeah, makes it all the way to the wall with the extra double jump and the spear zoomy, all to skip a giant frog shaped trigger there and get that one <laughs> pick up on uh, behind. It's two fifty four widgets. Uh, I call this worth definitely. And uh, but also we now have very comfortable access to the other parts of Luma with that one way wall right behind. Yeah, that's very nice. Great game knowledge as well coming from Zuri to just know that this is an alternative way uh, to be able to make make their way over to this key door, which is going to lead to the skill location. As on the left, we do see Ma end up picking up that life force. The difference between our runners, besides progress, is going to be none other than that water dash that Zuri actually ended up tracking down in Wellspring. Yes, but that actually matters quite a bit, I think, uh, with the with the way mod did not uh, head into pools from from Wellspring, that means Water Dash is completely locked away for now, and I don't think we're gonna be seeing um, that anytime soon. That means just pools is harder without Water Dash, right? It's the giant water area, so being able to dash through it sure helps with traversal, and uh, you can see some of the shenanigans more needs to do right now where Zri was able to wow. just go through. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the extra double jump was water dash locked. So we're also not going to see that. And uh, extra double jump is a lot of height in this game where you can combine double jump with weapon attacks to gain even more height. Yeah, for sure. So very, very nice find for Zri and definitely spelling an advantage for them as they are progressing through the seed itself. Oh. Oh, wow. On the right, Zuri actually ends up finding Burrow. That is going to be very, very nice and a requirement for them to, to finish out, unless they find like a number of teleporters uh, to be able to allow them to be able to uh, finish out the run itself, right? With Willow's Hearts already being done as just sort of a flag they set before they, they started the race, uh, like that is definitely a heavy sort of removal of Burrow as a requirement for a hard lock to finish out the seed. But still, like, getting access to the final dungeon itself uh, requires either the Willows and Teleporter or uh, it requires them to track down that burrow. So very, very nice find for Zuri. Yeah, also, oh. I don't know what the out-of-bound status is of not do using burrow in the final escape. I mean, uh, people always uh, have a lot of different opinions about what's out-of-bound and what's not. But I feel like uh, I remember this being called out-of-bounds if you don't burrow. So uh, still a hard lock in that case. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, I had completely forgot about that. I was totally oblivious that that discussion happened. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I might also be misremembering, but I do remember something along that line. Uh, however, it was in a pretty convenient spot, honestly. We have the guaranteed Ingwater Marsh TP on the Water Dash tree, and then it's right left of that. Of course, uh, whether you actually check the left pickup, that's a different discussion, uh, where there are also very different, very many different opinions on, but uh, I believe. Yeah, word. And so we're seeing Zuri now end up working over to the right. There's going to be a tree over here that is is gated by, uh, uh, excuse me, Bo. However, uh, with Water Dash especially, it's going to make sequence breaking the requirement of Bo a lot, lot easier. And so uh, still without having clean water, and also especially in this section where even having clean water, excuse me, uh, still makes that water poisonous. Uh, it doesn't just deal damage, but also removes visibility. And so Zuri had to end up like doing these water dashes in completely blind fashions. And so 
it's very easy to get caught on spikes there and uh, not be able to finish out. But I, I like this play from Zuri just going to buy the map so he doesn't have to backtrack through here to see if there's anything. <laughs> and yeah, it does, does actually see that uh, there's not really going to be anything in Hollow Grove. Really what our runners right now are looking for are twofold. The first one is going to be, as Zem has brought up a couple of times, is going to be a light grenade. We need light grenade or Bower's Reach with like sentry or something else in order to be able to get access to a skill location there. Uh, another thing that we might need is flap to get access to Bower's Reach. And then also we are either going to need a teleporter for uh, Moldwood Depths, or we are going to need glide, which is the skill that sort of sets a flag to be able to open up that entrance. So definitely like purchasing maps right now and maybe potentially buying some hints is going to be a play that we see our runners potentially do but man Zem, i just this is a very cool thing and i think like a really important thing for the state of the race is that we see that zri has over 1000 more spirit light than their opponent and the hints in this game for the biomes where they they can potentially track down skills uh specifically to to point out very specific skills are very expensive like we're talking thousands of spirit light uh for those clues to be able to be purchased Yes, and also one of those clues uh, having a requirement on top of the Rail Spring, but um, now if I only remember, I think it was actually the Clean Water clue, and we already have that, so it's fine, right? Or was it the... Uh, I'm sure we're gonna have uh, our, our support team remind us which clue that is. Uh, flap and Glide, yeah, Clean Water, Flap and Glide. So uh, I would assume that's exactly why Zri is back in the Rail Spring. That hint would actually be pretty useful. Yeah, so like funny enough, out of all the teleporters, uh, in all honesty, Wellspring uh, teleporter is like one of the best teleporters in a speedrun of the randomizer because it it brings you to to that shop in particular and it brings you to the Wellspring escape, which you actually have to end up doing, I believe, in order to be able to uh, purchase that clue to begin with. So, uh, but here we see Zuri not having the teleporter is having to go through these rooms painstakingly slowly. The nice thing is that in the next one, even though he doesn't have amazing verticality, having clean water actually completely changes the configuration for the, the like turnaround room puzzle. Uh, and this is in the base game itself. It's not just for the randomizer, which is very, very cool that the developers added that in. So having clean water is going to be really nice for the second room in particular. Yeah, truly. And uh, for now, as you mentioned, area is kind of a bit slow. Uh, I was trying to get a bit of a spear throw in there while still being in it and then going, being dragged along, didn't quite manage to get into that place. I don't even know if it's possible, but if he tried it, I'm sure it is. Um, <laughs> for now, we're just gonna see Izri kind of get through overcharge. Obviously, always nice. I really wanna see that grenade now uh, with both the splinter and fracture. That's gonna be so much damage on a single grenade throw. Meanwhile, on the left, more uh, not really finding the skills, but still doesn't stop him from making tree progress. And uh, we've talked about this so much, right? How you always want to progress your main objective if you can. And uh, he's doing really a great job at keeping up on those trees. Yeah, I think also just for me, very impressive play from Ma in general, uh, as they find a 321 Spirit Light pickup. So uh, similar to BF Randomizer, the higher the Spirit Light, uh, pickups you end up finding the later in logic they actually are. So this is a good indication that Bo is probably not going to be in somewhere pretty early on in the seed. But also just really impressive from Ma, they did the same dirty water sequence break that we saw from Zri when they had water dash, but Ma doesn't have water dash, so it is a much, much, much more difficult skip to do so. So big props to Ma for busting that out on a stage like the Oriversary today. I'm just so, so impressed by that. Yeah, very, very nicely done. And still uh, not getting stopped by anything. Continuing. This is Spirit Light farming here. And uh, I like this, honestly. <laughs> Look at that Spirit Light. 4,300. <laughs> uh, whatever hint we want, we're going to buy it. And like all others in existence at the same time. And if we're going to buy the Burrow hint, uh, we're going to figure out that's a marsh in about a second. And. Uh, it's gonna be a, a sad moment for our spirit light reserves, I think. Uh, yeah. No, first, first we buy the wood sand, and now we spent the four thousand on water dash pool. It's uh, flash in reach, grenade in depths, 
burrow in Mars. Uh, and we know we can get wow. two of these right now uh, on the account of three actually having them. Um, but I'm really interested to see in that in combination with uh, three buying the flap and glightened after finishing the escape is gonna give us as casters probably information about most of the rest of the seed here. Yeah, so something else to point out is that for every skill you have for uh, like a hint that you're ending up purchasing, it reduces the cost by 500 Spirit Light. And so Zri already, as they finish off Wellspring Escape, uh, Zri having uh, Burrow as well, well as Water Dash would have cost, uh, reduced that cost down to 3,000. But man, Ma just had to spend that extra 1,000 uh, in order to be able to track down Burrow as well as potentially track down Water Dash if they make a play to go for it. Uh, the burrow was immediately found after buying the hint, so that's very nice. Also getting a melting sword, that's uh, not too bad, honestly, with us not having any melt access yet. There's another skill in Marsh and might actually decide on wanting to do some extra checks, uh, trying to get that. We do have like the water burrow combination here and th these checks are fast. However, it is not quite here and now comes the, the big search around the map. Where is the other skill that I could be having right now? And we know it's uh, in the pool's approach, but more can't know that. Yeah, indeed. So over on the right, we're gonna see Zri starting to, to like move over. He's gonna, going to be able to get this skill location here, which is the main reason they're coming over. This also brings us the Moldwood Depths, but without having Glide, they are not gonna be able to go through the front door quite yet. Uh, but they still did open sort of the, the initial lever door in order to get uh, access to the entrance to Moldwood uh, for if and when they do end up uh, tracking down that glide pickup. Uh, so here progressing on, we see Ma also getting the same skill location. So we will see where they end up going from here. And uh, yeah, glide and waste, huh? uh, let's... Uh... <laughs> Flap and Deaths is also pretty funny. So we have Flap and Grenade in, in Deaths, if I remember this correctly, meaning everything we want to do in Bauer, go, well, go to Maldwood first. And uh, to go to Maldwood, we want to hop on all the way over to the right of the map before we're doing anything. So um, funnily enough, without more having that information, he's already done all the other stuff. So he's actually coming here Kind of an accident, and our runners are now in the same spot. Yeah, in all honesty, this is kind of massive for the state of the race. I think, like, besides this, the biggest differential between the two runners is just purely the amount of spirit light, right? So with Zuri having, like, 2,000 and then Ma only having about 400, this is going to give Zuri a bit of an informational advantage, potentially, going through. But if that is not the case, then, uh, honestly, it's it's really just wellspring escape right that's like separating them in, in terms of like overall game progress and so just very very cool to see how close this race potentially is as we're continuing to go into the mid to late game sections of the run itself yeah, and there's also something really interesting with uh reach access and moldwood and then flash being in reach there's a bit of a back and forth going on there with the hints so don't know if that will result in any interesting uh, things we gotta watch to find out, I guess. Um, but for now, uh, we have just doomed the poor Moki father to die. So that's that's Ray, I guess. Yeah, so coming over here, like, I guess like both on the right, both on the left. For now, definitely on the right. This area is going to be incredibly brutal to get through and very difficult. Like, it's very nice that our runners have regenerate because it's going to give them safety. But this one section here on the right, Zuri is going to have to try and damage boost through here and try and get height. Wow, that was only one proc of damage. Very, very well done from Zuri. But it's not over yet. We still have a number of places to go. Baiting all these shots is going to allow him to get through that floor there. And they are going to continue to progress through Silent Woods to be able to get access to the right side of the map where Burrow is going to be incredibly effective for checking pickups incredibly quickly. Yeah, going into waves with Burrow already in the pocket, that means you got an incredibly pickup dance, an incredibly 
uh, high pickup area at the same time. Wouldn't be surprised to see a few more skills at that point. But now on the left, uh, just want to mention again, Moor has one less jump than uh, Dree, but he's still doing all the same sequences, just with some different harder movement here. And he need to continue doing that if he also wants to reach the right side of the map. Indeed. Okay, so we'll see how Ma does in these damage boost sections that we saw Zuri to be able to get, get through. But yeah, here we go. On the right, Zuri is going to be the first to make it to the next area, Windswept Wastes, which has a lot of sand to the great dismay of Anakin Skywalker. But uh, <laughs> here, he's just going to be clearing out these enemies who don't technically need to clear them out. But yeah, as you saw, they ended up like getting away in the way of like an explosive enemy that we want to redirect with Bash to be able to break that wall. So... Very nicely done from Zuri, and they are going to be continuing on. Wow, nice uh, movement tech there, using regen with dash in order to move through a little bit quicker. Uh, and then checking the quest pick up there, just some diamonds, uh, which are going to be experience points with just some fun names. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we started off the seed with like not that much health stem, but we are rocking so much health now. This is just very, very comfy. It's going to make the Shriek fight uh, very nice to, to go through. Yeah, and it looks like Maw actually does not want to continue in Silent Woods. Instead, heading back to Blades, doing some checks here. And honestly, we still need teleporters here. And uh, what Zri was doing was definitely not the intended way for Logic to get you over there. So maybe we'll find a teleporter, a nice teleporter that will just uh, bring us directly to where Zri just found another extra double jump. So the verticality advantage is uh, starting to stack up as the pickup stacks to two now. We are gonna just need to see if Maw can track down any of those uh, those finds that Zri has gotten before, but honestly, it's really just the water dash that doesn't help to getting to right side and uh, the convenient extra double jump. Yeah, this is like very massive advantage for Zri here, just being able to be the first one to work through wastes in order to find that next bit of skill progression. Uh, really scary thing too, to me, Zem in particular, is as you mentioned, this is most likely going to be a teleporter progression over here to the side of the map. and. Uh, in all honesty, like we know that Bow is gated pretty late in logic wise, and we know that like Grenade is in multiple depths, right? So what light source do we have left? Well, we have Flash and Flash is buried somewhere that we don't want to uh, go or be able to find it as well. And so uh, Moldwood's going to be either very slow or very, very spooky uh, <laughs> as an area to go through in a speedrunning sense. Yeah, might even become both at the same time here, honestly. Uh, luckily for our runners, they can just hold that off until they get a bit more. And uh, for now, Zri is perfectly happy just clearing very spring race here, having Burrow in his pocket as well. And, oh, hey, wow. look, it's a third extra double jump. So verticality not really a problem anymore. Having bash, extra double jump, extra double jump, extra double jump, and double jump. Uh, yeah, that, that will get you to a lot of places. Yeah, I know we have like the beautiful uh, shard setup to be able to make like grenade like an unbelievably enemy deleter, but also just with all these extra double jumps, doing grenade jumps in particular are very, very nice in order to be able to move both vertically through areas, but also in all honesty, horizontally. And so even without finding launch, this is going to make Willow's end a lot easier for our runners to navigate through, especially for Zuri with just the pure number of extra double jumps they have tracked down. But man, Ma just like kind of going through the, the paces that Zri, that we saw Zri do earlier and just, just going through the wellspring in order to be able to purchase that next hint. And so we're going to see how they do as they go through the area, but Zri is just continuing to champion through this windswept wastes. Yeah, this is uh, honestly an incredibly, I, I want to say this is a pretty mean slash difficult seed to figure out how you want to route it. Uh, but finding Glide here on the right side, that definitely tells us where we're going next. We're going to Maltwood and with all the hints we've already seen, we know the seed is really going to open up depending on how much we clear Maltwood. So looking forward to the positions of that. I'm expecting some stuff right near the entrance, honestly. But uh, Seedren is always, always welcome to prove me wrong on that one. Yeah, so funny enough, like, Bo could just be here in Maltwood. <laughs> 
Uh, and also, like, some sort of verticality, as we saw from, like, Light like Grenade. But if Three actually finds Light like Grenade early on, it's very difficult to do, but you can actually speed run through Moldwood at a, a blazing place, blazing pace, excuse me, with Grenade. Just a, a lot more difficult to, to use functionally well and speedily uh, as a Light Source versus something like Bow or Flash. Alright, now um, we saw how the Banish Knight was barely not enough, now kinda doing some enemy manipulation to get more also, more finally uh, tracking down another skill, uh, sadly uh, it is called Blaze and that really doesn't do a lot for us right <laughs> now, um, but on the other hand, like, if all your hints say one skill, one TP, you might just need to start digging through those areas. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, but here we see the return visit from Ma into Silent Woods. So they're probably going to give another try at getting through the area. Sadly, when they were going through, uh, they weren't able to make it all the way to the next waypoint. So they're having to traverse through this starting uh, section again, which is pretty, pretty lengthy. But they're doing an excellent job just showing off so many pieces of tech. I love loving all these sword hovers. Just very, very cool to, to show their in-game skill as well as knowledge uh, for working through. Oh no, they wolfed themselves, I think. Oh man, so they, I think they just didn't have enough keystones on the first time that they made it to that key door. Oh no. Oh, I did that in one of my tournament races. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that, that, that is uh, a thing that can happen, sadly. But for now, uh, refilling on the regenerate here and going back up to said keystone door. I don't actually remember if the keystones were just on the way. Oh, also on the right, wanna interrupt for a moment. A grenade was found and flap is right next to it. Wow. So that stuff, uh, if you find the TP, you immediately gain all the goodies. Um, also, Zri showing off the amazing cluster grenades that we have here just exploding an entire screen at the time uh yeah so damage that is dealt with entering bowers reach is dealt with and movement also is more than dealt with, with us having both grenade zoomies as well as grenade floats with like three double jumps yeah this is absolutely a showcase of how skilled zri is at speedrunning the randomizer right so bashing off this lantern and then pressing and holding grenade afterwards allows him to uh, store their momentum as as they go through and oh no they're out of energy so they just barely didn't have the distance to be able to make it over to the tree but the good news is that the checkpoint is relatively close by it's just a question of execution and there it is zri able to make it through moldwood depths to the skill location and then also tracking down flat and having light grenade means that they can also make it make their way to Bower's Reach in order to be able to continue their progression of continuing uh, to really push for a win for their team. They are absolutely no question about it in the lead here. Yes, indeed. Also on the left, a uh, small update. Maw did actually have enough keystones, but after the respawn, it looked like he didn't because of multiplayer syncing. The keystone the door stays open and your keystones get uh, still get removed. So, uh, oh no. Yeah, after he took the death, um, the door was open and we just couldn't see that the door was open. It's, it's all good. We're in races now, which means we can finally find those skills we found earlier and get some... Uh, get some progression but speaking of three he just entered bowers reach nice extra double jump finally has one of those two for more but uh three can now kind of go through this entire area and uh there aren't many trees left if you look at the tracker on the bottom there yeah this is this is massive for for three they're absolutely in skill go mode right now with uh just going through so like they really don't have much much to do. It's really all going to come down to their execution as they make make their way. And if there's any sort of indication of just like how sure I am that they're going to nail it out of the park with closing out the seed, they just have been playing so incredibly well, especially here in this Bowers Reach section uh, to make it make it over to this key door and then the skill location. And then I imagine they are just immediately going to go uh, back over. Uh, and start progressing to the final tree as well as Willow's End. Oh yeah, they're trying to do it. Uh, so there, uh, what Zri did, if you saw him flap, 
is if you flap and then activate the tree at a really specific timing, it allows you to move around and teleport out during that tree cutscene. And they didn't quite get it there, but that's okay. That's okay. It's just a very minor time save, but I want to point that out. It always worth going for, and if it doesn't work, well, then you just waste it like half a second. It's it's honestly fine. But uh, yeah, as you mentioned, Zri now on the way to his final tree, going over to Launch Tree in particular. Uh, that means we do have to do some fighting. Uh, so for our next trick, we are going to make some health bars disappear using our <laughs> nice little grenade setup. You can see it being charged and uh, whoops. Uh, yeah, that um, there's no health bar there. <laughs> I don't even know if the health bars actually exist. I, I still think they might be a myth, but who knows? <laughs> oh yeah, swapping out vitality for potentially overcharge or life force for additional damage. Yeah, or overcharge to be able to cut down on the energy cost of light grenades. So cool thing is like when you're doing like the tricks, especially surrounding bash and light grenade, um, it doesn't cost any energy unless you release the light grenades themselves. Uh, so, very, very cool that they can make use of all of that, like, verticality and distance. As we see on the left, Ma having an excellent Wellspring escape, being able to make clean work of that, and they are going to be purchasing their hint to be able to find out where they are going to track down that next important thing that they want to try and find, uh, which will send them immediately back to Windswept Wastes, uh, which is why. True, we do know that after all, since we've already seen some of the stuff but uh yeah on the right side that is tree number i can count 14 uh and with that we have gained the no uh, we've gained permission to access the final shriek fight and that's exactly where zri is now gonna go uh accidentally kills his widow oh, no, no. because his grenades do just way too much damage and even an accidentally oh. released grenade is more than enough to break <laughs> and complete enemy but um I can do some backups with grenade floats and some uh some sword double jump resets on all the good stuff that we have so now he's gonna float up through the lasers to willow while more on the left uh, knows where to go and is gonna track down light hopefully very soon all right so here we go zri is going to be entering the final dungeon of the entire run uh and having every single skill location they actually don't need to do the willow's hearts because it was just added as a flag from the runners to just have all the hearts be done. So really the only thing that's stopping Zri and his teammate Sirius from pulling the win in this awesome Oriversary relay race is going to be Zri's execution on the final fight. Yeah, and honestly, uh, execution is about what I expect to happen there with these amount of grenade upgrades. So uh, <laughs> we'll see how long Shriek lives or when that Shriek will even reach the final phase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, Shay. Uh, so very, very cool. Using grenades as well to just bash off of them. Very nicely done. And so we're going to see, yeah, they're setting up here to skip the slow walk zone on, on the right by jumping over the slow zone itself. And then skipping the cutscene is going to be beginning the engagement. Equipping overcharge uh, causes them to take additional damage if they get hit, but it also costs the energy cost in half. Um, and wow, nice hit there! As <laughs> Shriek is burning. burning. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. That was awesome. Oh, nice MPX there. Nice skin for Shriek. Uh and getting some nice particles effects on top and you can see Zri is very confident in diminishing this health bar during the escape knows exactly where to throw all of the grenades uh, in particular as Shriek is coming and look wow, at that goodness. Shriek just dying Burrow was not actually required <laughs> with OTP would have been more than enough <laughs> GG Team Zri Rias Wow, what an amazing performance indeed. And that was that was amazing. That was such a treat to like end their run on. I have to say, Zem, just like seeing them absolutely obliterate Shriek, not even required to do the final two phases of the fight. GG's, my friends. That was such a fun race, both in the Blind Force and Wild West. But man, Zem, it's not over yet. We still have Ma, and Ma is not i don't believe aware that his opponent is finished so they are going to keep going until they are done themselves uh and that being said 
this is the scary portion of the run for Ma, is going to be mold with deaths. Just once again, we don't have a skill that we can utilize to gain vi visibility. However, enemies are bioluminescent in this area, and so they are going to be giving off a good amount of light themselves. And I just love that. Mechanics of bashing that spider forward. What a show of finesse from Ma. Very impressive. Yeah, very nicely done. And uh, we also know once Ma actually heads towards the teleporter, there's just two nice free skills right next to each other. So uh, not gonna be too long until Ma finds those. Now takes an intentional darkness death to be back all the way to the door he just opened and can now continue on through Moldwood, track down those uh, skills and hopefully also join Zri in defeating Shriek very soon here. Yeah, indeed. And oh, that was so close. Uh, so basically when you enter darkness, you'll see the, the circle shrinking. And then when it completely shrinks in a split second later, uh, Ori will just end up instantly dying. And so here it looks like, yeah, Ma's going to potentially opt for a bash Clyde to try and make it through, but now it's still not quite making it. That is totally okay. This is very, very difficult. So instead what they're going to do is that they are going to use a light source by breaking that, which is sort of the normal way of progressing through. And that's enough for them to be able to get through. And they are going to be rewarded with their grenade. So we're going to see if they're able to put on a nice showcase here, but yeah, nice momentum storage from that flower pad. It's gonna bring them to both flap and light grenade. Just very, very cool tech. And I'm just so happy that we have two incredibly skilled Will the Wisp randomizer runners as part of this showcase. Just very impressive play from both of them. Yes, indeed. And you can see how uh, more is. Oh, hey, our second launch fragment that we've seen. Uh, <laughs> that's, that, that's still not free, and it's definitely not free on one person. But just saying, uh, they, they exist. But uh, yeah, you can see how he's uh, using Grenade to just gain a little bit of extra darkness timer from time to time. Um, also, now has the potential to go for zoomies when and as, as well as these grenade floats whenever he wants to. So we're finally doing fine on uh, all the good stuff like verticality, speed, and so on and so forth. Also has the same amount of damage that uh, Zri had earlier and can now <laughs> continue spamming those grenades, reaches the tree, and that means two trees left. And we know those are gonna be done very quickly. Wow, just beautiful execution from Ma. I cannot stress enough how how both Ziri and, and Ma just made that look unbelievably easy, but it is not. Grenade is definitely the, like one of the hardest forms of tech to be able to use it uh, acutely in order to be able to progress through Moldwood without taking like fireflies, for instance, or utilizing bow to be able to uh, get through. And ooh, cool tech there, just throwing a grenade in the air and then tracking that in order to be able to bash off of it and like do some momentum storage shenanigans. And uh, Ma is making quick work here and they are going to be coming over in order to be able to get access to Bower's Reach itself. Yep, quick sneeze from the bear. And with that, we are into Bower's Reach, as you've mentioned. And uh, if I remember correctly, we don't need anything else here. So it is uh, really just uh, don't get wolfed, but you have four keystones, so you're fine on that end. And make your way over to the tree. Heck yeah, all right. So Ma just pulled that lever in order to open up this door, one of the last few levers that they will have to pull in order to be able to finish up the seat. I believe there is only one more between them and certain finishing of it. And very cool UI element there actually with just uh, using the, the built-in user interface, which we uh, added in, or excuse me, the developers of the Will of the Wisp randomizer added in. That is not in the base game itself. And so, uh, being able to just activate that ended up telling them exactly which trees that they still hadn't finished out yet so that they know that they are indeed they haven't forgotten any trees all they have to do is come over here to this light grenade tree and then go over to the launch tree which is on the way to will's end anyway and then uh, that will allow them to enter will's end as well as finish out their seat yes indeed there we are it is Yet another tree. We've seen a few of them between the two games by now. Uh, I, w I, w I would dare say we've seen like 49 in, in this uh, relay run. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, definitely time to finish things out. And how, how, what better to do before finishing than to upgrading all the damage. <laughs> Reckless. Uh, look, honestly, 
was nice was a nice kill from three, but honestly that wasn't enough damage. I think we need more. <laughs> yeah, it's not enough to be able to shotgun literal grenades into Shriek's face. We need to do so uh with freaking bazookas. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh... Uh, but yeah, here we are in Feeding Grounds itself, which is uh, not a problem for, for us to be able to go through because we haven't activated that sort of stealth section for uh, it. But here we go. Here is going to be a really cool bit of tech using that dash, turning around and activating regen to build that horizontal speed to be able to make it over to that elevator. Very nicely done. Very cool to see that. And each of those are actually like pretty precise, both with positioning wise as well as timing wise for when you end up turning around and activating regen. So. Just very impressive to see, and like no surprise, like knowing the caliber of speedrunner Ma is, uh, especially with speedrunning the randomizer, just very phenomenal play. Yes, indeed, and uh, we get to see the same thing we saw earlier. Uh, turns out, grenades <laughs> that explode into more grenades while you throw more grenades is pretty good at killing enemies, and. Honestly, the amount of shenanigans the randomizer, especially in bonus, has just to deal absurd amounts of damage. I love it every time when I get to see it. But for now, uh, we got a broken elevator yes. and there's a tree to get. So let us head over. Very nice movement there to get uh, out of the elevator and into this, uh, what, what's it called? Weeping Ridge area and yeah that's that's all the trees done all 50 skill locations among the two games among the two runners are collected and all there's left is to absolutely destroy shriek another time <laughs> all right excellent so we're going to see how shriek does we'll see if uh, ma's also able to replicate that two phase shriek fight out of the four potential phases that they may end up needing to face and using a white grenade there to throw one throw three up and bash off of one of them, uh, allowing them to get through that section. Very, very well done. That, uh, I mean, in all honesty, when I started speedrunning the Will the Wisp randomizer, that section in particular gave me a lot of trouble, but just putting on such a clinic, uh, Ma is doing an excellent job. Indeed, and uh, it's own, the only thing that's left is some small amount of Willow, as we've seen. Uh, there are no more hearts. Oh, gets exploded there, but that just means we respawn with a lot of health, so can just go for another attempt this time, uh, taking a lot less damage here. So, okay, all right, okay. still has the shot. This was never close, uh, just trying to make it a bit more exciting here. Yeah, took took great inspiration from Scarfell during the MQO race in that, <laughs> that final phase of the Shriek fight. That was so terrifying. Um, uh, oh no! Takes another little bit of a death, but once again, there's just a really nice checkpoint system within Orion the Will of the Wisps, so no real big time loss, uh, which is really, really good. Uh, but, ooh, nice grenade tech, just not quite getting the angle off of the bash that they want. And there we go, nice bit of a zoomy, and so they're going to do... One more of these, they have to be careful of the laser beam. Yeah, they, they're able to get around it. So here we go. We are now coming in for the final Shriek fight for Ma. Uh, and just one more fight, and then that is going to do it for Team Cleanfell and Ma, finishing with a very incredible run. Definitely, definitely going to be under two hours in total between the two runners, which is really impressive, mind you. Uh, like, my PB for the randomizer is like a 101, uh, like one hour and one minute run. And so... Both Ma and ZRE are absolutely going to showcase off. And there it is, the burning bird again. That is so cool. Uh, I love this. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I did actually watch quite a bit of Willow to Risk Randomizer, and somehow I never saw that. So uh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> oh. uh, also, a quick spoiler. We are absolutely going to get a quick kill, <laughs> and Shriek actually explodes <laughs> on this. Second sweep. So, um, sorry, uh, Team Zerius, I'm taking away the victory for the fact of Ma having Blaze as well as getting a two hit tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome stuff. That was great. GG. What a fun relay race between our two teams. Of course, Sirius and Zeri finishing with an overall cumulative time that is going to be less than their opponents. So, uh, they, they won in terms of having lower times in total, but Clean Fell and Ma just absolute winning winning it in my heart. Just, that was so funny. I will, that's never going to get old.
Okay, but anyways, <laughs> uh, that being said, Zemsis, thank you so much for joining me on comms. This was very, very fun. Yeah, always a pleasure. Was so early, I was so now. Will be the next time we do comms. And but also, hey, thanks, Clean Moss Series Three for yeah. putting out an amazing relay showcase here. That was was really really fun to watch. And also getting both of the games together into one thing, uh, always really really nice. Um. Speaking of games, we are not even close to being done. Uh, if you like races, then you should continue watching because uh, next up we have a 2v2 multi-world randomizer race uh, followed by an all cell fragments race. Both of these will of the best before we then switch back to Blank Forest for Muffin to come back once more to finally absolutely break your voice and do some OBSC <laughs> commentary. So stick around everyone and see you on the other side. For sure. Thank you, Apple, for restreaming. You were amazing.